Two California fighters ready to do battle here in our second fight. Top ranked boxing on ESPN Plus. Lupe Contreras with the introductions. We continue with the action here at Bank of California Stadium. Once again, proudly presented to you by Hall of Fame boxing promoter Bob Arum's Top Rank Incorporated and being sponsored by Geico this bout. Eight rounds or less in the super lightweight division. Our judges scoring at ringside are Patricia Morse Charman, Dr. Lou Moret, and Pat Russell. At the sound of the bell, the man in charge of the ring, referee Ray Corona. Presenting first, the fighter standing in the blue corner, wearing white with gold, red, and black trim. He weighed in at an official 140 and one quarter pounds. After an outstanding amateur career, including representing the USA at the 2008 Olympics, he now enters the ring for the 22nd time as a pro with 19 victories against only two losses, eight of those victories coming by way of KO. Fighting out of Norwalk, California, El Intocable, Javier Molina. Across the ring in the red corner, wearing white with green and gold trim, he weighed in at an official 141 pounds. In his 25th professional bout, with 16 victories against five losses, three draws, 11 of those victories coming by way of KO. Hailing from Ontario, Oregon, Manuel La Tormenta Mendez. Look, this is gonna be good from right here up, from right here up, all right? Touch gloves, God bless. Referee Ray Corona in charge of this eight round super lightweight bout between hometown favorite Javier Molina and Manuel Mendez. Mendez is a native of Oregon, but actually trains and lives in Indio, California, just outside of Palm Springs. So, two California fighters and Javier Molina, Bo Mack, a guy who had a pretty illustrious amateur career, made the Olympic team in 2008, beat the likes of Danny Garcia in his amateur career. Career has kind of had fits in starts as a pro, but he's 19 and two, and looking to kind of get back into good graces and show himself on a big national platform. Well, one thing about this kid, uh, I've been knowing this kid for a for a long time, probably about 10, 11, 11 years. I watched him in the amateurs. Um, he's a great boxer, good hand speed, and he's moving down in weight too, from, from 147 to 140. And he looks in pretty good shape. Big fan base here, good crowd coming over from Norwalk. Not too far away from where we are here, just outside of downtown Los Angeles, right next to the Memorial Coliseum, USC, the football team having a open practice today. There were a lot of people down here for that. I'm really looking for uh, Mendez to, to look, look for the overhand right. He's gonna look for the overhand right. He's gonna, if you if you just watched it, when Mendez threw that first jab to that body, he kind of st stopped Javier in his tracks. And so that means he got a good, he got a good jab on him, and he tried to use that jab to come over top with that right hand. Accidental headbutt there, kind of made Molina grimace. Molina is in the red and white trunks. Mendez in the white and green with gold trim. Mendez is 16-5 and 3, but 11 knockouts of those 16 victories. He had a little power on him, you can tell that. Mendez is coming off a loss in February, unanimous decision, 10-round defeat. Javier Molina coming off a hard-fought victory in March. A eight-round unanimous decision against Abdiel Ramirez. What's going to be a problem for Mendez is uh, Javier stepping around him, has a little constant movement. Not a lot, but just keep stepping a little bit. Well, and Molina has the two-inch height advantage as well. And definitely fighting more straight up and down, where Mendez, a little bit of a crouch. Yeah. Come forward, bully, bully type of fighter. Mm -hmm. He'll take one or two to get that big shot off. Look like it might be that right hand. Molina, for the most part of this first round, has worked on the outside of the ring. Right uppercut, left hook from Molina. Mendez looking like he might—he's the bigger fighter, might be having a little bit more power. 
But as you can as you can see that Mendez gonna need uh, uh, Molina to stand still. If he don't stand still, he won't be able to get nothing off. Molina definitely appears to be the faster hands of the two. Molina's corner asking for the jab, and Molina delivers 10 seconds to go in round one. Nice combination for Javier Molina. One to push him back behind that jab. Javier Molina, who just 29 years old, but Bo Mack, he had a two and a half year layoff between 2016 and 2018, returned to the ring in June of 2018 and has looked to establish himself as a more consistent fighter ever since. But what does it do for a fighter, not physically, mentally, when it comes to his in, being sharp in the ring, being sharp in training, when you take that long of time out of, out of the ring? It's only, it's, mentally can do something to you, it, it, even if you just came off a loss. Or if it was a bad loss, or, or just a loss that you thought you shouldn't have lost, but it's gonna, it's gonna take a minute for him to get back to where he was at when he came out to the Olympics. Fast hands, just dominating everybody. He has the ability to do it. He just needs to get some more fights underneath his belt and get back in the mix. Because look at the guys he didn't beat. And some of those guys is world champions now or former world champions that's still in the top top ten in their division. Specifically, Danny Garcia is one of those that Molina was able to beat as an amateur. And, and if you were training a guy like Molina who had such an accomplished amateur career hasn't quite hit those heights as a pro yet would you kind of remind your fighter of the type of guys he was able to beat as an amateur and what he's capable of well you wouldn't really have to because he knows it himself he knows that he's gonna beat those guys those champions uh, those top guys like brad solomon uh uh, uh Jeremy Bryant, uh, you know, Danny O'Connor, Carl Dargan, those guys, those guys have been, they was on the brinks of being world champions. And they, like you said, Danny Garcia was a world champion. So he, know what, he knows what to do. He knows what it takes to be a champion. So you wouldn't have to remind him, just trying to keep him in the gym. Stay in the gym and, and try to look for something better every, every fight. He his corner say walking back, walking back, and they want to, they want to see him walking back with, with that jab. Molina well, has been listening to his corner pretty well, uh, trained by Robert Luna. Overhand that's right what, from that's Mendez. What, yeah, that's what he got to watch out for is that wild overhand right. Arete de Vaca, the main event, WBO Super Bantamweight title fight later on on ESPN. 10 Eastern, 7 Pacific, our main event start. And then you have Jesse Magdaleno taking on Rafael Rivera. Which is going to be a great fight. I, I want to see Navarrete. I want to see him against de Vaca. De Vaca is, well, from what I've seen in studying film, is a extraordinary fighter that wants to be a world champion. Undefeated thus far for Devaka, 20 and 0 in his career. Fights out of Phoenix, Arizona, where the majority of his fights have taken place. This is by far the biggest stage he has ever been on. And Navarrete, after upsetting Isaac Dogbe last year in their first contest, absolutely dominated the rematch. And now, as you talked about earlier, ready to carve out a championship persona outside of his fights with Isaac Dogbe. Well, they, they, he, they feel like it probably was a fluke, the first one, and then the second one came out. He said it in both, both meetings before they fought, I'm going to knock him out, and he did just that. Looking for a knockout tonight against Francisco De Vaca. Another good round for Javier Molina in the second fight here on our undercard. Eric Rothman, World Championship trainer, Brian Bomack-McIntyre here with you in Los Angeles. And Bomack, one of your fighters, 
here with us ringside. Just one row back, Jamel Harry. Yeah, yeah, he's back there with his uh, with uh, one of his guys that that uh, he come back and forth with to uh, California with. He's excited to be out here, man. So I'm happy for him. Somebody else is out here, but he didn't, he didn't make it to the fight. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> we won't rat him out then. <laughs> Jamel Herring, obviously now world champion and a guy you're training. What are you looking to work on with Jamel as he gets ready for his next fight? Just keep doing what he's doing now. He, he's a hard worker and he's a great, great boxer. And he thinks in the ring, mm. you know. He's a great listener. One of the more disciplined fighters, obviously a military background. It seems like he takes direction well and has obviously improved quite a bit and earned that World Championship title with the victory on Memorial Day down in Florida. Short left hooks from Molina land here to start round number three. The ring generalship of Molina has been on display here. He's been able to keep Mendez at a good distance. Yeah, because that comes from that, all those fights from the amateurs and fighting those good guys that he's in, he's in fault. Mendez on the offensive. And it's not hard, it's not hard to, to figure out Mendez. You know, he's a come forward fire, fighter. He works behind his jab. You look for that wild right hand, and all you gotta do is just keep stepping around you. Using your jab up and down to slow him down. Going, going to the body. Mendez to you, does he seem to be waiting for that one big counter punch? Yes, he's looked for that, he's looked for that right hand or that uh, over the top or that wild left hook. Like I said before, he, he needs Molina to stand still and for him to get his shots off. Crisp left hook from Molina. Molina has not stood still at all in this fight so far. Nah, you can't stand still, man, when you got a guy in there with, with 16 wins with, with 11 knockouts. So, something about those knockouts says it's got power on him. Molina has had a good game plan thus far, and he has ex executed. One good thing that Molina has done defensively is he hasn't allowed Mendez to really get off a ton of combinations. Of course, as I say that, Mendez lands a combination. Well, but he, 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 you're right, he hasn't let uh, Mendez get uh, no combinations off. That's because he's using his legs. Stepping around me, that's just a part of the, another part of your defense. You don't have to stand in front of a heavy puncher like that. 45 seconds to go here in round number three of a schedule eight. We've seen a couple times that Mendez throws out these quick flurries, but Molina has really done a good job defending him. Not a lot of those punches have landed cleanly. Yeah, that doesn't bother him any. If you're Mendez, that's more for the judge's benefit than anything else. Make you look Javier, like a more active what fighter. Javier needs to do, he needs to, you know, stick to that body. Stick to that body. Take some of them air off the tires. Three-punch combination for Molina. Capped off with a left-handed uppercut. Little tougher of a round to score. However, Molina did seem to do the most. Damage. Yeah, well, yeah, he dominated. To me, he dominated the round. So, I mean, he just he, Mendez got some shots off, but it wasn't no effective shots. The work weight rate was higher for Mendez, but the landed shots yeah. were in favor of Molina. We take a look at some of the action from Molina's side of things. Is in the corner with his trainer, Ian Franklin, 28-year-old Mendez, and the 29-year-old Javier Molina. A couple of great prospects coming up on the undercards after this fight. Chris Van Yerden, the South African native, will be fighting in our next fight. And then after that, Janabek Alim Kanuli out of the Agus Klimas Boxing Laboratory will be fighting. And then Arnold Barbosa Jr., who had a splendid knockout in his last fight, will round out the undercards here from Los Angeles. The 
you mentioned Momak Molina dropping down in weight. He seems yeah. to be in great shape, yeah. great endurance, has stayed on the balls of his feet, has moved around really well. well one, one thing that uh, they did for this camp is they started a little early and they wanted to see how he felt at 140, you know, how, how the power, you know, how I feel with other guys in the smaller weight class, how I feel. So he said he felt good while, while he did it because he treated it just like a fight. Then he came back at this fight at 140, and um, he said he felt great at this weight. When you go down in weight, when you have a fighter that's going down in weight, what's the most important thing as a trainer that you're looking for to, to see it determine how he's going to handle that weight drop? Make sure he can take his power down, down, down in the weight class. You don't want to move down, down to a weight class, a smaller weight class, and we really knock these smaller guys out. And Molina, not necessarily known as a knockout artist, eight knockouts in 19 victories. Has been the aggressor in this fight. Not a ton of big power shots. No, he, you know, he probably understand that he don't he don't have the power to uh, knock Mendez out. So he's, he's doing just boxing real great. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that's just ring adaption. You see yeah. what your your opponent's working on, and you adapt and you do what's necessary to win the fight. And so this is where Mendez won't Javier at on the ropes like this. Short he, punches. Want, he want him close so he can get his shots off. Look at them little small short shots. He can't do nothing else but that because, you know, Molina's using his legs when he's on the outside. Short left hook from Molina, countered with another left hook from Mendez. Mendez needs to get those little small sh shots off and then step over to the side, try to create another angle for himself. So Instead of getting peppered like this, look at that jab. Mendez didn't like that jab, hitting him right in the nose, comes back with a flurry. 20 seconds to go here in round number four. Now, now I like what he just did there. He threw a feint first and came over, over top with a right, the left hook to the body. That worked for him. Two wrestle into the corner. Nice work over the last minute and a half from Mendez. Not a whole lot of punches thrown in this round from Javier Molina. Everybody wants to know, who do you want to fight next to City? For me, it doesn't matter. I want to fight anybody, anybody. I want to even to get titles. For me, it doesn't matter. I came to the point of the fight, even to get titles. I took it belt. Now I need three more belts. Mendez getting some work in the corner, and we mentioned our main event with Emmanuel Navarrete and Francisco Tavaca, and then our co-main event, Jesse Magdaleno and Rafael Rivera. And Bomack, you talk about a guy in Jesse Magdaleno who has garnered a lot of its attention over his career. He's a very popular fighter, a guy that has fought sporadically over the past few years, has taken long stretches outside, out the ring, and not inactivity. And Rafael Rivera, a Mexican fighter at 27, 3 and 2, 18 knockouts in his career. That's potential for a slugfest in that bout. Well, yeah, it, uh, Rivera said in the, in the fighters meeting that he feel like Jesse is not the same Jesse he was when he first won that title. He's going to look to put the pressure on him. Should be two great co-main event fights. Fantastic atmosphere. You couldn't ask for a better day of weather if you're going to put on a boxing match outside. Perfect weather. Now five of eight between Molina and Mendez. And again, Molina goes back to working the outside of the ring. A lot of movement. You can see, you can see the Mendez really not respecting the Molina's power. He's just walking to him with his hands down. Looking for that one big shot. I looked at, just looking now, looking as I'm studying um, Javier. I looked at when he threw that right hand. He didn't have nothing on. He just threw it. And he needs he need to sit down a little bit more on his 
on his punch, especially his right hand, to look get those knockouts that he's looking for. Well, maybe it, as this fight progresses and gets later and later, the difference in power because of that weight drop for him, dropping down a weight class, maybe start to show itself even more as he starts getting tired here towards the later stages of this fight. Correct. What's, what, what's going to help him? What's going to help him in the long run is, is hey, go to the body, start, stick to the body. Try to slow Mendez down a little bit. Mendez, all he does is come forward. Straight right hand from Molina on the forehead of Mendez, right in front of us here in the corner. Mendez is looking for that that left. right hand over top, left hook to the body. Where Mendez has found the most success has been when he's been able to corner Molina on the ropes and he goes to those short jabs, short uppercuts. But hasn't really been able to land a ton of up power shots in this fight. He, he needs Molina, he needs for him to stand still. Is there anything that Mendez can do to kind of force the issue and make Molina stand still? No, not really, man. You know, maybe a little bit more pressure with his legs, try to stay closer to him, pick up the punch count a little bit more. Because as you see, he's just coming in, coming in, one or two shots, coming in, coming in, throw the right hand over top, left hook to the body. And most of the time, nine times out of 10, is slapping. Mm. So it's not, he's, he don't have any power on him. Left hook from Molina. And Javier Molina continuing to dictate the terms of this fight. Bomac, if you're training Javier Molina, what do you tell him going into the final three rounds of this fight? What does he need to work on? What do you want to see? Let's, 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 push, him, let's push him back a little bit behind your jab. Once you start pushing him back, start going to the body, trying to take some of the air, the air off the tank, and hopefully in the next couple rounds, we can probably get a stop. Molina has not done a ton of work to the body of Mendez. And so you, as you can see, Mendez, Mendez is, He'll take those head shots all day long. He'll, he'll eat them and keep eating them and eat them with some cereal. <laughs> this is where a fighter got to be smart at. If he, if he see that his opponent is taking all head shots and he's still, still coming forward, you got to think of something else. got to think of something else to slow that fighter down. Round number six between Javier Molina, the hometown favorite, and Manuel Mendez. Mendez sitting in the corner to start round number six and just taking the punishment from Molina. Molina's corner yelling at him to go to the body, exactly what Bomax said he needed to do in between the rounds. You should go into training. You ever thought of that? Oh, uh, I thought about it, but some of them fighters, man, it can be kids. <laughs> Mendez left hook to the body of his own as Molina retreats, ducking out of the way. Don't let him rest, Don't let him Whether or not the power is there for Molina, the legs have definitely been there. Oh, yeah. He said he felt like he in better shape than, uh, than the last couple previous fights. Molina coming off an eight-round unanimous decision victory back in March. Crisp left uppercut from Molina as the two fight in close quarters. So it looks like Molina. Mendez is trying to like maul uh, Molina now since he can't get to him. And with that right hand over top that he's been looking for all night. Mendez. Mendez has thrown that counter right a few Don't times. Rest, really rest. wild, swinging Don't it out rest. pretty wide, and just hasn't been able to put any pop on it. No. This combination from Molina. See again his elusiveness as Mendez tries to get Molina on the ropes, and Javier smartly getting out of the way and comes back with a crisp left hook. Nice little spawn left hook. He set it up with his legs. He stepped over to his right, then stepped back to his left and threw it. 
And not only Bomack has he been moving around, but something that you've taught me as we've done a lot of fights together has been the direction at which Molina is moving. And he's he's mixing that up as well. Yeah, he's good side to side movement. He'll, he'll side to side, then he'll push, he'll push uh, Mendez backwards a little bit, then he'll step back and step off to the side, so it mix up um, Mendez. Look at that right hand over the top. He's starting to land the last couple of times. Right hand from Mendez. Molina takes it in stride and then a flurry from him. Mendez rocked and stunned for a moment. Let's see if Molina can capitalize. A good left hook from Molina with 10 seconds to go in the round. That's right hand from Molina over the top. Boy. That last 30 seconds, he found the home. So Molina dominating the sixth ball back. You have him winning every round so yeah, Every single round. Yeah, the only one that I thought might be a question was the fourth round, but it wasn't a big one either way. Molina has done a great job of staying consistent. And right hand over top by um, Javier. Caught him, looked like he shucked him a little bit. Mm -hmm. One thing I like about Javier, he hit him with the right hand, then he comes right back under with the same hand. Just misdirection of the right hand. Do something different, don't come back with the same right hand. Most of the time, the fighters can see it. Both of these fighters, not strangers to going the distance. Mendez coming off a 10 round decision and a loss back in February and Molina an eight round decision with the win in March. Mendez trying to go to the body. We have not seen him do a whole lot of work to the body of Molina. And now Molina has Mendez on the ropes. Two right hooks to the body and an overhand shot from Molina. That was a good punch, good punch selection from Javier. Just don't have the power to slow uh, Mendez down. Molina's corner telling him to walk to Mendez, put on the pressure. Try to capitalize on what has been a dominant fight so far. Mendez a little bit oh, slip my. there. Like he might have sucked that back leg a little bit. Mendez. That's all you right there, Javi. Let's go, man. Come on. Molina trying to go down low. Using those legs, countering with the right hook. Looking like a world champion there. Nice body shot. A smart, judicious fight. And honestly, Bomack, it's it's coincidental that we were talking about Jamel Herring, your fighter, a couple minutes ago. Molina and Herring have the same type of style, very disciplined inside the yeah. ring. Good, smart good fighters. Boxer. Yeah, good boxer. He's thinking, he's a thinking fighter. Mm -hmm. And it's been very clear what the game plan has been from Molina to stay on the outside, keep the movement around the ring, keep Mendez at a good distance because Mendez, as we've seen, is not a mobile fighter. And Molina has executed. Molina's corner saying, let's finish this, let's go. Did, I think he just needs to pick up his punch count. And out to the body, come back up to the head. He's ready, Javi, he's ready. Keep pushing him backwards. Sit down on your shots, Javi. Sit down, sit down on him. There you go. Lena, a clean left he, hook. Yeah, his coach just told him sit down on his shot. He sat down on his shot. And Mendez ate that left hook. Mendez has hardly thrown a punch here in this seventh round. It's hard to get to Molina, man, because he got them good legs on him. As the height and reach advantage as well does Javier Molina. Eighth and final round coming up. I 
needed to see a lawyer about my accident, but I couldn't leave my house. I was really hurt and couldn't drive. I needed someone that could come to me. We know the last thing you want to do after an accident is worry about driving to see a lawyer. That's why we'll come to you. Wherever you are, call us right now. Gruber Law Offices came to my house. Great service, real results, Gruber Law Office. Whether you live in Milwaukee, Madison, Kenosha, Waukesha, Racine, or anywhere in between, we'll come to you. One call, that's all. What beats next day shipping? Getting what you need the same day. With Ace, you can buy online and get free store pickup or get it delivered that day. Around the block, what you need in stock with people who know their stuff. Ace is the place with the helpful hardware, folks. Eighth and final round between Javier Molina and Manuel Mendez in a fight that Javier Molina has dominated from start to what will be a finish here in the eighth. Molina coming out with a nice combination, left hook to the body, then left hook upstairs. He's sitting down on those shots, he just don't got the power. Maybe, you know, when, when I see fighters like that, I give them some advice. Two things, push-ups and pull-ups. Keep it simple. Yep. Develop some more power in your in your arms because this is where your snap come from is in from the shoulders. Well, clearly Molina doesn't need to work a whole lot on his legs and his ring IQ. Those have been on display throughout this entire fight. Maybe some push-ups and pull-ups will help in his knockout count later on in his career. Yeah, well, he got that got to develop over time. He ain't gonna develop it in the next six weeks. Mendez, a frustrating fight for him. Can't get uh, Javier to stand still so he can land what power he do have to land it on him. And you talked about it at the beginning of the fight, but Mendez fights in that bully type of style, yeah, and it's tough to bully some guy, somebody when you can't even reach him. Yeah, you got that right. He's using them legs. I like to see a, a left hook come behind that uppercut. He just threw that right uppercut. Javier. Molina lands with the uppercut. You yeah, see all those punches that Mendez just threw? Just slap him. Yep. Just slap the mess out of him. Don't worry about that shit, There you go. That's a shot right there. Next fight on the card will be Chris Van Eerden and Aslan Beck Kotsaev. Van Eerden, prospect from South Africa. Yes, he's in a, he's ranked in a um, WBO 140 pound, huh? He is. Yeah, I'm got my eye on this kid. <laughs> And Eardin, a very exciting fighter. Less than a minute to go here in the eighth round between Molina and Mendez. Overhand right from Molina lands as he dances away from the Mendez pressure. Javier uh, got to do is kind of dance the night away. Yep. And that crowd is getting a little bit. Trying Lance. to push him along. Not a ton of action in this fight. Not a lot of big punches. It's a smart, consistent victory for Javier Molina. Real smart. Mendez paws at Molina. Slapping, and Mendez says, come on, come on, let's go. Let's give the fans what they want. Molina. Says, no, that's okay. I'm just fine taking my victory the same way I wanted it the whole fight. The decision between Molina and Mendez and more boxing from S Southern California when we return. Javier Molina hoping to get the 20th victory of his career as he dominated the bout between him and Manuel Mendez. Molina from Norwalk, California, here just outside of Los Angeles. A big fan favorite and a lot of friends and family traveling to see him fight here tonight. And he put on an excellent display of discipline and consistency inside the ring. And the scorecard still being tallied. Lupe Contreras, our in-ring announcer, will have the decision momentarily. Should be a clean sweep, huh? 
At least from where we were sitting. Right. See what Lupe has to say about it. After going eight rounds, judges Russell and Moret turned in identical scores of 79 to 73. And the judge Morris Jarman scores at 78 to 74. All in favor of the winner by way of unanimous decision. From Norwalk, California, El Intocable, Javier Molina. Well, not a clean sweep on the cards, but a unanimous decision nonetheless for Javier Molina as he moves to 20 and 2 in his career. Manuel Mendez falls to 16, 6 and 3. We are 60 seconds away from our next fight. We'll step aside. Don't go anywhere. Chris Van Eerden, Aslan Bek Kotsayev coming up from the Bank of California Stadium. Eric Rothman, Bo Mac McIntyre back with you in a second. <laughs> 